Integration by parts is a method that we can use to take the complex, hard to calculate integrals. And what we do is we just sort of break them apart and we try and make it into an integral that's easier to calculate. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over a couple of introductory examples and I'll introduce the concept of integration by parts. And in the next video, I'll do some more advanced examples. So if you're already familiar with this topic, you might wanna check out the next video. Okay, so with integration by parts, Normally, we're given a integral. Let's say it's, let's say we have x times e to the negative x dx. So what happens is, with integration by parts, is we look at here and we say, if we have an integral that's made up of two functions, for instance, this has x and e to the negative x. Those are the two functions. What we do is we say, look at f of x, is e, f of x times g prime of x is equal to f of x times g of x minus the integral of f prime of x times g of x. So what happens is we look at one of the functions and we call it g prime of x and then as you can see here it be, we take the antiderivative of it whereas with f of x it turns into f prime of x. So one function we take the antiderivative of and one function we take the derivative of. And so what we do is we look at our integral and we say which one would be f of x and which one would be g prime of x. And we can say, well, if we took the derivative of x, it just becomes one. And that makes it a lot easier to calculate. So let's try this out. We say that f of x, f prime of x, g prime of x, and g of x. Now we're gonna say that f of x equals x, and really there's no set method of doing this. You sort of just have to, to think about it, and there's, there's sort of a rule of thumb. So then f prime of x equals one. Now g prime of x, we're gonna say equals e to the negative x, which means that the antiderivative of that is negative e to the negative x. And so what we do is we just take these values and we plug it into this formula. So then the next thing we do is we just say, what is f of x times g of x? And that's just gonna be x times negative e to the negative x, negative e to the negative x. And we subtract that by the integral of f prime of x times g of x. So f prime of x is just one, one times negative e to the negative x. And then, this is times dx. So what happens is we just try and solve this integral now because it's much easier. Right now it's just negative e to the negative x. So we put this back in, then we get negative x times e to the negative x minus, so what happens is we're gonna factor out the one, the negative one, and since we're subtracting, it becomes a plus. So it's gonna be plus the integral of e to the negative x dx. So then, then we've taken x to the x times e to the negative x, and we've turned it into just e to the negative x. It's much simpler. We can take the antiderivative of that very easily. And the antiderivative of e to the negative x is just negative e to the negative x. So then, negative x times e to the negative x minus, I should write this here, minus e to the negative x is equal to the integral of x times e to the negative x dx. And so this is the reverse chain rule because it really, it looks suspiciously familiar to our chain rule that we know from differentiation. Again, we're just taking one to take the derivative of and one to take the antiderivative of. Now, it, might, it, gets, it seems simple, but it, it gets a little trickier. For instance, what if we have the function, the, or sorry, the integral of ln of x dx? And we want to use integration by parts to solve this. But at first sight, it doesn't really look like there's two functions. So what we can say is that we're gonna call f of x 
We have f of x, we have f prime of x. This is what I always do. I just write down, you know, f of x, g prime of x, g of x, because then it just becomes so simple as plugging in the formulas, and you make less mistakes that way. So f of x is going to equal ln of x. And f prime of x is going to be dx. So it's going to be dx. And that, of course, equals, or sorry, sorry, g prime of x is dx. And that, the derivative of x is just 1. Whereas f prime of x is going to be the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. g prime of x is 1, which means that g of x is the antiderivative of 1, which is x. And so if we plug it into the integration by parts formula, which says we have f of x times g prime of x equals f times g minus the integral of f prime times g times dx. And I'm just using f, f to represent f of x and g to represent g of x and f prime. And you get the idea. I hope. Okay, so let's plug it into this formula and see what happens. So we get f of x times g of x. So we get ln x times x minus the integral of 1 over x times x. And then we just have the integral of, of 1. We just take ln of x times x. We subtract that by, well, I mean, we just take we just take x times x, and we just say we, we just have 1. So then, then we're left with, finally, ln of x times x minus, what's the antiderivative of 1 times dx? It's just, it's just x. So then our antiderivative, or sort of the, inter, or like the, the, the solved integral, is this. And it, it makes it very easy when we use integration by parts and use this method. We're just taking one we're taking the derivative of, one we're taking the antiderivative of. But as with anything in math, it gets a lot trickier. And so the next video, I'm going to go over a couple more advanced examples.